someone just made eye contact with me. Hey y'all, and welcome to Clover. I'm very excited to do this video because it's based off, it's inspired by somebody else who was inspired. So I'm really, we're paying the inspiration forward, I feel like, you know? Uh, kind of like that annoying thing where you really just want to pay for your own coffee in a Starbucks drive through but then like, they're like, you, someone's paid it forward. And then you awkwardly have to be like, like this did actually happen to me once where I had just gotten like a coffee and I was like, oh, like, let me do the car behind me. And they're like, mm, they got food for three people and drinks. So it'll be like $35. And I was just like, I, I mean, I can't not continue this train. And you know what? Today I would have been like, okay, well, then never mind. I appreciate the kind gesture. Here's a tip. Uh, but anyway, so this video is, uh, if you didn't know by the wonderful Katy Perry song that I probably incorporated somehow into the intro. This video is the ones that got away, the makeup products that I sometimes dream about, think about, wish I had in my hands, wish I could apply to my face, wish I could bathe in, etc. And I saw my, well, one of my good, uh, good, good, good buddies, Ivy of Face Forward fame, both on YouTube and Instagram. I feel like I don't even need to tell you how incredible Ivy is, because if you follow me, you definitely follow and know about Ivy's brilliance. But in case you don't, Ivy has, I would say the best vo voice on YouTube. It's like swatching overhead videos, this side of YouTube, and really good opinions. And I just, and, and I don't just say that because I usually agree with her. <laughs> but maybe I do. And she was actually inspired to do this video by Juliet of Mostly Mad, who's also my buddy. She... Apparently had a YouTube channel and Ivy, when she discovered she used to have a YouTube channel, discovered this video idea, which was basically going over the makeup items that you almost purchased or never got around to purchasing. Maybe you couldn't purchase because it sold out so quickly that, you know, still take up brain space. And I love this idea. And of course I'll link Juliet's and Ivy's videos below. But when I was thinking about making this video, I was like, I wonder if I'd even have enough to like put in the video because I'm usually pretty, like if I miss something, I don't think about it too much. I also, and we'll get into this more per item, the way I will not work to buy something. Like if I have to put in any leg up or like any sort of effort to give my money to somebody, I will not. Like if there's a line, if there's a long line, if I have to get up at a ridiculous time to do something, like it will, it would have to be very, very special for me to do that. So to kick it off, I'm gonna do um, the only uh, in the little Venn diagram of Ivy and I's video, the only uh, item that is in both of these videos, which is Kaleidos Flower Punk. I regret not buying this palette. I really, really do because even though I'm not as into them now. I mean, I still like them, but like back when I was doing a little bit more masculine, matte only, no blush makeup era of my life, like this palette, and half of this palette would have been perfect. And that's probably what stopped me was there are some like more mauve tones and some bright like mints in here that I would have probably liked the bright mint matte actually, but I wouldn't have used every shade in this palette, which is what I think stopped me. Also, something I don't think gets talked about enough because I think a lot of people who do talk about Kaleidos on YouTube, Instagram, etc., are sent these items in PR, but, and, and this is, you know, it is what it is. I'm not complaining necessarily, but if you order from Kaleidos as a, as, as a normie, <laughs> as, as I do, or I would be, it takes like a month to get items. Um... Which isn't like a deal breaker, and it makes sense. I mean, I think they ship from China, they're a Chinese brand, so it's realistic. It's coming from around the world. But I remember that kind of being like, and I was just like, well, I don't know 
if I'd be excited about this palette in a month, which then sent me down a whole spiral because I'm like, well, if I wouldn't be like, why would I buy something that I wouldn't want to use in a month? So that kind of turned me off. I also actually remember this palette not getting great reviews on YouTube. I remember people who had previously been really into Kaleidos eyeshadow, like Escape Pod, which I now do own. And I love that palette. I don't think Ivy loves that palette. I think she mentioned that she was kind of mid on that palette, but I love the Escape Pod palette from Kaleidos. I, people who had previously loved that one weren't as blown away by the formulas in this one, I remember. So I was very much on the verge of buying this, but didn't. And it's been out of stock for like ever. And that was like, I, I would say a solid like calendar years ago that this came out and this was even available. And it went out of stock rather quickly. So if it was available to purchase again, I would probably get it. I think curiosity, you know, curiosity may have killed the cat, but I think in this case, satisfaction would have brought it back because I've just always been like the, the artwork on it's so beautiful. The it's, it's really neat packaging because it doesn't like fold open like a normal palette. The, the lid, the cover, that's what I'm looking for. The cover comes completely off and it's like its own mirror thing, which is kind of cool. Um, I love the grungy colors. I love the mints. I mean, I love mauves now. I love pinks now. So, well, I don't love pinks, but I'm willing to wear mauve -y tones now. So, and, and I do love my Escape Pod palette. Ivy also mentioned this in her video, which I totally agree. This is also sort of a, almost like phase one Kaleidos project, product. You know, when they first launched, they were so much more colorful. And these days, it's a lot more neutral and smoky um, is their vibe. So this doesn't feel like... And, and I think that's why this one, like, you know, maybe stings a little bit more. Is that Kaleidos doesn't release color stories like this anymore. I'm holding out hope because it's still listed on their website. After all these years, and I mean years, like, it's still listed on their website. So... Maybe their website manager is just super, we're not archiving anything <laughs> mode, but I have faith, or not really faith, that's stretching it, but I am manifesting, that's how we'll put it. I am mani manifest I'm manifesting, I'm manifesting that maybe they'll do like one last final launch of this for people who didn't get to purchase it. Um, years ago <laughs> but yeah this is definitely one that got away and one that I would I don't know if I'd be a hundred percent sure I'd purchase it but yeah I would be likelier than a lot of the other ones on this list next <laughs> is a palette that I feel like is going to make so like if you've been on the YouTube beauty space for a few years um this is a palette that you're gonna be like I completely forgot this even launched, or I did not know that that ever launched. <laughs> Still think about is uh, from a brand I don't support anymore. I'm not going to get into that, but it's a Kathleen Lights collaboration with ColourPop, and it's the So Jaded palette. <laughs> I, even to this day, like I was making this list and I was like, oh, I should totally put the So Jaded palette on it. And then I went to look at the image and I'm like, that stands up. That's a nice color story. That's a nice color story. Like, Kath like, it, Kathleen Lights knows her way. As somebody who has purchased collaborations that she has curated, she knows her way around like color aesthetic and color, what's the word I'm looking for? Color curation. She knows how to curate a color story for sure. And I mean, you could maybe say like, I wish like this could be tighter, of course, because I remember this being... I mean, not like a big deal, but I remember her saying in her video when this launched that this was ColourPop's first ever like mega palette. So this came before like Stone Cold Fox or um, what's the the Bare Necessities? Is that what the one that everyone loves is called? This came before those more successful neutral adaptations of the ColourPop mega palette. And at the time, I was so close to purchasing this. I think I even made a ColourPop order around when this launched, but I decided to like build my own palette or something like that. But I, I don't know if I can say I regret not buying this palette because it was a few years ago and I don't know if it would still be in my collection, but I love these tones. Like I love, I mean, one thing about like 
I don't know if casting likes would be considered OG OG beauty YouTube. One thing about like YouTube, successful YouTubers from Kathleen Light's era, not that she still doesn't make content that's worthwhile. Actually, I haven't watched her in a pretty long time, but they always have <laughs> they always have these two transition shades for fair to light skin, and it's always like a peachy like transition shade. And it's always a uh, more warm brown. And of course this palette has both of those. That's personally useful for me. And then you've got these like gray sort of, I mean, the whole palette's kind of like gemstone themed. So there's these like, the in the right bottom corner, there's these really cool jewel tone pops of like purple and like a teal and a dark blue. But then you also have like kind of a chartreuse and like warmer sort of rusty colors, but also like, some murky grungy yellows, a few random like cool tones. Like it's a really cool color story. And I remember there even being um, like a sort of like sheer sparkly, I think a super shock formula shade in this that looked really pretty. There's like an inner corner highlight because another thing about those YouTubers from that era, they will never not make a palette that doesn't have an inner corner highlight in it. And I'm a basic bee who loves an inner corner highlight so I can appreciate that. I don't know. I, I, I think this holds up. <laughs> like, I mean, obviously I would not purchase it now for other reasons, but I, like, I don't know. When I was researching this video, researching, that's maybe overselling it. But when I was putting together my little doc outline for this video, there are some of these on like Macari or wait, Macari. But I saw one and it was like $30 new. And I was like, Ooh. Like maybe after my no buy, <laughs> if there's still a listing like that one or similar, like maybe. But then I thought about it. One, I'm definitely in an era of my collection where I'm trying to be more minimalist. Not because it's like, I think a better or more morally important value that I hold, but just like for me, I enjoy, I, I'm enjoying this period where I'm not buying and have a very curated small collection. I think compared to, like, I own, you know, some Pat McGrath eyeshadows. I now own some Viseart eyeshadows. Those formulas are, I would say, much better than ColourPop. I really like ColourPop's mattes. I learned how to do eyeshadow on ColourPop mattes. But, you know, qu and their quality control can be a little iffy as the years have gone by. Also, one thing about ColourPop, it's not clean, as far as I know, like clean beauty. But ColourPop eyeshadows expire. Like, one day you turn around and that thing is growing, like, dots and textures. And they, and, and I think it might be because something about how they produce the makeup and it's all made in the USA and made in their own labs. Like, I don't know. I don't know. But ColourPop eyeshadows do certainly, like, go bad. And I've had nearly all of them that I've kept for a while start to look a little gnarly and not feel super safe putting that on my eyes. So that's another, I mean, like, I don't think I would buy that, this palette anyway, but especially when I remembered how grisly I, uh, Colourpop eyeshadows tend to look after a few years have passed, or maybe just even a year, honestly, for some of them, in my opinion. So this one will stay in the vault. I thought I may have imagined this. I was like, did, does anyone remember the So Jaded palette? <laughs> does Kathleen Lights remember the So Jaded palette? All right, next one is at the opposite end of the spectrum. This is still a very talked about eyeshadow palette. I feel like it's still recommended whenever you do those, whenever it's Sephora VIB sale season and everyone's trying to get all your affiliate money and doing those giant recommendation videos where they recommend you a hundred products. This still comes up, it kind of holds up, which is also something that I've always liked about it. But it's a Natasha Denona Biba palette. Ooh, the way I have flirted with giving Natasha Denona $125 hairs <laughs> for this palette so many times. Is this $125? $129. I think it must have went up then. I feel like it used to be less. Um, not that that's shocking. I have almost bought this palette so many times. I have duped this palette with like ColourPop singles I had, like that was years ago. And it's just, I've always wanted to bite the bullet and I just never have. And there's reasons for that. And this palette is still readily available. Although for a while it was out of stock and then it was went on like super sale at Sephora for like a few hours before it completely sold out, which I missed. I maybe would have bought it then because <laughs> it was like half off or something. Although even half off is like, that's still very expensive. That's like 
just the price of her normal midi palettes. I think I would maybe like it. What I stop what stops me every time. I mean, one is the price. This is a very expensive eyeshadow palette. It's technically more expensive than a Pat McGrath Mothership. And it's I would be buying it because of the mattes. And the thing about Pat McGrath is that, you know, I, I actually really like Pat McGrath Pat McGrath's matte formulas. I know a lot of people tend to not like Pat McGrath's matte formulas. Um, or not a lot of people, but it's sort of like, a, like some people think they're just average. Some people, it's not their favorite. I really like Pat McGrath's matte formula. I've not said Pat McGrath's matte formula so many times in a row in ever. The thing about buying a Pat McGrath Mothership, which I actually, I've never even bought either of mine. They've both been gifts, but you get those like really, I mean, I'm wearing one right now. I'm wearing the Bronze Seduction palette right now. And you get these really special, I mean, they're, you know, lovingly called special shades. They're so glittery and unique and special and beautiful. And I know some people think Andy Shadows are better than them, but I, they're my favorite eyeshadows in my collection. And this, you're paying more than that actually for just matte eyeshadows, which it, it's just like really expensive. Like it's extraordinarily expensive, I would say. Um, whether or not it is like the palette is good, that's, you know, there's sometimes debates or sometimes people post content where they're like, you know, is it worth $129? There comes a price point where it doesn't matter how good it is. And I think this is priced at that. And yes, you can always get, I think Natasha Jonas' website does influencer codes now. And, you know, you probably should never pay full price for this item. But even just where it's starting at is insulting to my conscience. And I'm somebody who, I mean, I don't love spending a lot of money on anything, but I will spend a pretty penny on makeup. And it's previously, before my no-buy, what I did with most of my extra income and sometimes with not my extra income which is a topic for another video but <laughs> this is just insulting to my um being how it's priced because there are three i think metallics in here but like i've like no one talks about the metallics i'm sure they're fine i'm sure they work fine but you know the thing about this palette is that it's a perfect neutral palette other reasons why I chose not to purchase this. A lot of these are her cream to powder formula. Like I believe the black is the cream to powder formula. I think several of the other shades are her cream to powder formula. I actually now own the Natasha Denona um, Yucca palette. And that has two cream to powder mattes in it. And I don't like that formula. But even before I bought the Yucca palette, I was just, I, I heard mixed things about her cream to powder formula and I was kind of unsure and I was like, because I had previously owned a mini Natasha Denona palette I got in like a BoxyCharm or something forever ago. And I knew from that palette that I really liked just her normal powder mattes. So this not just being her typical creamy matte formula or whatever it's called, that kind of stopped me. It's also, I mean, you have a row of cooler tones at the bottom, but it's also very, like, like the warm tones are very warm. Like, there's not a lot of true, or at least from swatches, and I've, trust me, I've watched a lot of content on this palette. I wish there were more just, like, true neutrals, kind of like how the Viseart neutral matte is, which I now own, which, I mean, spoiler alert, is, I, I think, a much better buy for me, and I think likely a better product. Again, I haven't ever tried Bebo, so I can't say that for sure. And I think ultimately, like, TL didn't listen, um, <laughs> is that there was always something that wasn't perfect about this palette. And if I'm going to buy a 120, now $129 matte eyeshadow palette, even if I'm getting a dis like a bit of a discount on it, I need to not think there's any faults. You know what I mean? And every time I was like, well, there's that one thing. And that was enough to stop me. Um, you know, there were several times I almost got this during a Sephora sale, during a Natasha Nona Black Friday sale, blah, blah, blah. And I'm happy I didn't. I mean, I'm sure I would have gotten a lot of use out of it. I would have made myself probably. But now that I've tried the cream to powder matte formula, I'm not personally a fan of it. And now that I recently purchased the petite version of Viseart Neutral Mattes, which is a dream to work with and... I got it on sale for less than $30 and I just, 
I've used Natasha Denona's map, like these map formulas before, and I can't imagine that they're better than the Viziar palette. So I'm happy I never bought this and I never will likely. Next is um, a brand that's no longer with us and a product that's no longer with us. Even though there are a few products from this brand still being sold by Smashbox. Uh, and <laughs> this one's like a primer, which I'm not even that into primers. I always wanted to try the Becca First Life primer. <laughs> and if you know anything about, um, I guess my aesthetic, I am obsessed with the color lavender. <laughs> And this primer is lavender colored. <laughs> That's about it. Like, it looks like it might give a bit of, like, a Glossier Future Dew effect. I'm guessing it's just, like, more of, like, a moisturizing primer texture than a true oil serum hybrid like the Glossier Future Dew is. But it gives that kind of vibe. And I just remember when I first started watching YouTube, a lot of people used this primer, but also a lot of people used a similar primer that was like a sort of like golden beige that I don't remember. Like, I don't remember what that one was called. I think that one was even more popular, but I just thought this primer always made people's skin look like really refreshed and kind of rejuvenated. It looked really dewy and pretty. And I just loved the aesthetic of the bottle and the actual product being lavender. And I always wanted to try it and I sort of regret not getting it when Becca went out of business. I mean, I don't, like, I don't know. I guess I just would like, like, I don't even think I'd be rushing to ever buy it, but I would just like, you know, when I use up my glossy future do, I like, I would like to give a mini of this primer a try. I, I would just be curious if it uh, was as good as everyone said, you know, when I first started watching YouTube in 2016. <laughs> uh, but alas, unless Becca makes a comeback or Smashbox brings back the Becca First Light Primer, I'll never, I'll never get that experience. And, and that's, that's really tough. Um, it's actually not really tough. I just felt like over dramatizing that. I, I was trying to push myself to see like, could I force out fake tears? And unfortunately, I'm not a fest. I almost said I'm not a thespian. I'm not a thespian or a lesbian or a thespian. Not any of those. Okay, this one is more just like an entire sub-brand that I never got the chance to try that I'm still bummed about. And that is Glossier Play. Uh, if, again, if you're familiar with my content, you will know I am a bit of a Glossier... A bit of a Glossier... I, like, I don't want to say Stan because I still hold a lot of space to critique the brand and make fun of the brand because I think all brands should be made fun of and critiqued because they're not people and they're trying to get us to buy things and they get crazy tax breaks that actual individuals don't get. Anyway, I'm fine making fun of brands and I will make fun of Glossier. But if you ask me my favorite makeup brand and when people do ask me that out in the wild, out beyond these YouTube walls, I say Glossier because I love Glossier and most of their products work really well for me. And I don't know. If I was ever going to buy old makeup online, it would be Glossier Play. But actually, it probably wouldn't because old random Glossier stuff goes for crazy amounts on resale sites. And I wouldn't say I'm a true Glossier collector, but I am. It, it is the one brand I enjoy having an extensive knowledge base on just because I have for a while and I just like continuing that. And because the products usually do work out pretty well for me. So I just hate that I missed all of Glossier Play. Like, I wish I had gotten to try it. That's about it. I mean, I don't think any of these products are truly like, like I'm not dying to try a specific shade of any of these. I just wish I had bought in when it was still available. And I had, because people say that liquid highlight's really pretty. Uh, there's a glitter thing that I probably would have skipped actually. If those eyeliners are similar to their new eyeliner formula, the number one eyeliners, I'm happy I never had the displeasure of dragging that across my eye because the number one liners are one of Glossier's worst products and the worst eyeliner I've ever tried in a pencil format. So dry, so irritating to my eyes. Yucky. And then the Vanilla Clip, which is a Hannah Louise post on favorite, which is not the only Hannah Louise post on favorite on this list. <laughs> I just wish I had gone to try. I wish, oh my God, more than anything, I had the pencil sharpener. The pencil sharpener, like why does no one else come out with that design? Makeup companies, you are losing money. You are losing money. 
by not putting out uh, the exact same format of pencil liner with a giant cup that catches it as you sharpen. Like, that is so convenient, so genius. And I, I remember um, Diana at it when she was doing a paid partnership with Glossier for actually the number one eyeliners. And she's saying how good they are, which I'm not saying she lied, but I'm just saying, like, maybe I got different ones than she did. But she pulled out this pencil sharpener and was like, this still is the best ma makeup. This still is the best ma makeup. Oh, my God. This still is the best makeup pencil sharpener I've ever used. And I was sad. I was like, damn it. I wish I had that. And I think there was just, like, fun merch when they did this. Like, Glossier is, like, not just about the makeup. It also prioritizes aesthetic, which is what I like about the brand. I think one day I'll do more creative commentary content on this. I semi-promise. I think aesthetics matter just as much as formulas and makeup. And I think trying to act like makeup is this very utilitarian task when it really is like this joyful celebration of loving beauty is like silly and acting like it's dumb when brands like Glossier or whoever else really care and invest in their aesthetic is silly. Anyway, yeah, I just wish I could go back in time and I tried Glossier Play. Tear rolling down my face. A millennial pink tear. Rolling down my face. Next is another heartbreaker, y'all. This is pure, purely ish for packaging. And I now have an interest in trying one of these because I've come to enjoy layering powder cheek products with cream cheek or cream or liquid cheek products. I wish I had gotten an hourglass face palette last year with the gorgeous elephant packaging. I think I'm interested in getting an hourglass palette as a gift. <laughs> I'm interested in being gifted one of these this year. I'm going to put it on my Christmas list probably for, you know, that I share with family and whatnot because and I think it'll be the only piece of makeup I put on that gift on the on my wish list because I really just think it would like I think I would use it a lot and I think the formulas look really nice um, and the lightest shade this year looks like it has some really good options in it blah blah blah. But last year and this year you could customize and put like whatever group of six products you wanted to in one of these palettes and like pick the packaging the cover you wanted and last year was the first year i believe doing these the beautiful animal artwork palettes and i love elephants i have loved elephants since i was a kid there's this whole story in my family about how when i was a kid and we went to the zoo i would point at the elephants and i would yell anis we have to go see the anis so my mom every time we go to the zoo still is like here in the audience and I have to go take I have to go take a picture please I <laughs> go pose for a picture like nobody's business <laughs> in front of the Anis and ever since then I've always loved elephants I think they're fascinating I think they're beautiful creatures I once walked by a baby elephant little Scotty at the Louisville Zoo who's no longer with us which I can't even talk about and that was a spiritual experience for me even though the guy was kind of a dick and trying to act like there was danger in being too close to the elephant when really all I cared about was that the elephant was safe and being taken care of and one of my goals in life is to go to like one of those like ethical, like not ever riding an elephant or ever hurting it in any way, but just getting to be close to an elephant and maybe feeding it or something or just hanging out with one. I love elephants. I really love elephants. If I was going to get a tattoo of an animal that was on my beautiful little baby Remy, it'd be an elephant. And I've always wanted, oh my God, I almost wore my elephant shirt for this video. I should have done that. And I have always wanted an elephant makeup product. I remember, I think Kiko Milano had elephant bronzers for a second and I almost just bought one. But I I really need my makeup to be practical. I don't like to hang on things just for packaging or whatnot. So this would have been great because I think I would have really actually enjoyed the product and the, the packaging was just so, so pretty. So, so pretty. And the packaging this year is beautiful too, but it's not an elephant. And I know, it's like, I like you know, there's an el elephant count calendar out of the shop that you can't see behind me, and I could just get a beautiful element elephant print. But it's 
This one stings. This one really stings. Oh, my God. This one looks good. All right. I got to reel, reel it back in. All right. Next is the promised Hannah Louise Poston favorite. And if you watch HLP's channel, you will know. <laughs> I regret never getting the e.l.f. active lip and cheek palette and i actually have a funny story about this so i actually did purchase this palette i bought it from elf's website which side note if you've never bought from elf's website they will throw things at you like you will buy like one thing and they'll be like actually you have twenty thousand elf points to use which translates to 40 elf dollars and also if you purchase more than five dollars of products you get this like halo glow bundle like they will Make sure you are well taken care of at elf.com, let me tell you. Actually, I don't know if it's elf.com. I feel like not elf.com. It doesn't matter. But I was making a purchase from elf, and they were throwing in everything left and right. But what I really wanted was this elf active lip and cheek palette. Because if you know, you know, HLP really, and still does, like really cares for this palette. There's these beautiful, creamy, lipsticky formulas, blah, blah, blah. We've all heard it. And they have these beautiful brown tones that are really rich and neutral. There's also a really glossy wet look highlighter. And what really is a great endorsement for this product is that Hannah Louise, like like HLP will not use things that don't have really nice packaging basically. And this has hideous packaging and she's still like panned, like chose it over whatever other cream blush she was, you know, writing poetry about at the time. And I really wanted it. I bought it, technically. And I think I'm the reason they actually removed it from the Elf website, because it was still up. And uh, a few hours after I bought it, they're like, hey, not the nose. We forgot to type it down, and we ain't got none. So that was sad. Um, I probably could have, like, sought it out harder and, like, looked harder. But, again, I don't look for things. Like, I'm not, like, I'm not good at thrifting, because, like, people are like, well, the key is you really have to search. And I'm like, well... I won't be thrifting then. So, I mean, this is like a product I don't... Like, I'm fine. I have beautiful cream blushes. I have beautiful cream highlighters. I'm not that distraught. It's just kind of a... I feel like a piece of my makeup viewership history because it's such an iconic product in HLP world. And I, I would have liked to have gotten to try it. And I think I would have really liked it. Because also, I usually get along with health products really well. So... Here's to you, Elf Active Lip and Cheek. And by God, um, Elf, like, you should collab with... Like, could you imagine how iconic it'd be if Elf was, like, came to Hannah and was, like, we basically just want to repackage. Maybe we could retool the formulas in the Lip and Cheek palette, and but we want to, like, collab with you to do it. Like, that would be... That would be really smart, Elf. If you're listening. Eyes, lips, face. If you're listening, do that. And the last product I want to talk about, this is still available. This is probably like the newest release I'm talking about. Mm, maybe in the Elephant Palette from, Our, from Hourglass. The Anastasia Beverly Hills Hugo Palette. This is undoubtedly my dream color story, or at least an iteration of one of my dream color stories. It's grungy. It's got some olives in it got a really murky bronze there's some peaches there's like a sort of rusty terracotta brick there's a dark satin brown that's cool toned and i love a dark satin in the outer corner it's nearly perfect and all that to boot it's got a beautiful pop of muted gray lavender in it mm. The problem is, my friends, because I've had many a chance to buy this. I've even had like, basically the budget to buy this. Could have asked for it for a haul. Like, you know, whatever. And I undoubtedly would have loved it. Beautiful palette. It got great reviews. I swatched it in store. It looks beautiful. I would have, I like, and like for this time of year, the fall and winter, I would have already hit pan if I had bought it last year. I am undoubtedly sure about that. However... It's a bit of a bummer 
but I have morals. Mm. Ew, boo. And I can in good conscience purchase from Anastasia Beverly Hills. Why? I don't even remember at this point. <laughs> like there have been so many scandals and so many icky things that ABH has done. I just am like, yeah, I just can't buy from them. Like, I don't know why. They just kind of are deeply problematic in vague ways that I have forgotten about. And also just have always kind of given me the ick with how they've marketed things and blah, blah, blah. So I have even gone to Sephora to buy this palette and I'm just like, I can't. Like I even am like, you know what, be a bad person today and then tomorrow you can feel guilty about it, but you'll have the eyeshadows. And you don't want to return makeup product because then you'll that'll be bad for the environment. So you'll have to use it. And even with that, I just couldn't make myself. Which I guess at the end of the day is good. It's good to have a moral code. <laughs> but like, oh my God. <laughs> I still do like I thought I was over it and then I have pictures of all of these and like the word doc that I'm outlining this video from and even as I stare at it I'm like god damn that's a nice palette luckily though and this loops back to Ivy my one one of the you know the middle part of the inspiration pay it forward train we're building here luckily um the news well one of the newest items to make my makeup collection i just had to buy a couple of replacements which do fit with my no buy and ivy was like hey could i buy you a late birthday gift would that be okay for your no buy and i was like yeah of course like if i'm not buying it so she actually gifted me because we talked about how much i love the busy art palettes that i bought before my no buy and i mentioned on my instagram which is at clove underscore room if you ever want to follow me and hear more from me on a daily basis Maybe not daily basis, but more of a regular basis. I'm there. I don't really do like content content, but like I post hot pictures of myself and give opinions on stories, which I think is Instagram in 2023, right? I had mentioned on my Instagram that I really wish I had bought either the Koi or Koi-ish palette from Busy Art before my no buy, or I had just like gone back and put it in my order that I made. And she kindly gifted me the Koi-ish palette. And in, well, not really in honor of Ivy, but I thought this was appropriate. I, because Vizier palettes are, you know, can be rearranged, and I've had a couple of quads that have the same size pan as this. I actually built my own palette, which is so face forward of me. Um, and it's actually, I mean, it's not like exact dupe for dupe at all, but like it's duping the vibes for sure of Nouveau. Um, it's got, I mean, honestly, for me, I need more than a lavender pop. So it's got a lavender little corner thing. It's got like that like nice little pop of green, but this shade from Viseart's really nice because it's it, it's less like murky olive and more true, almost like Kelly green, but it has lavender flecks in it. It's really pretty. And then we've got some like grungy cool tones. There's some of these like light shimmers that sort of remind me of some of Nouveau. So I actually have a really nice dupe palette. That's all they wrote for this video. This has been really fun. I really enjoy doing this. It's kind of fun to like be able to do a video like this because if you do just purchase everything you want, you never get to appreciate the ones you didn't have. You know what I mean? If you would like to be next on this pay it forward chain and this inspiration chain, um, you should do the video if you're a creator or if you're on Instagram or you can just tell me in the comments what are palettes or any items I talked about more than just palettes, any items that you Think about often and wish you would have purchased. Give this video a like, it helps me a lot in the wild, wild west of YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you would like to see more. And thank you all so much for being here. Bye y'all.